All right, in today's video, we're gonna talk about making phone calls. This is something that is really rough for a lot of people with anxiety. Um, and a lot of people avoid making phone calls by using text or email or other things, um, which is fine. But one of the things that has happened with that is that it's become kind of self-perpetuating. So by that, I mean, you have anxiety about making phone calls. Um, and so you don't make that phone call, you text or you email or whatever. And then you've basically given your, your anxiety a little bit of a treat. So like if you were in the grocery store and there was a kid and the kid was crying and you're like, fine, take the candy. Then the kid, sure, the kid calms down, but that means that next time that kid's gonna be screaming even louder. It's kind of the same way with anxiety. So if your anxiety is like, no, no, don't make the phone call. And then you don't make the phone call, you just gave your anxiety a little bit of a treat. And then the next time it comes time to make a phone call, your anxiety is gonna scream even louder. So you may have worked yourself up into feeling worse about phone calls than is actually actually warranted or maybe even worse than you actually feel because anxiety has convinced you through this happening again and again and again that you somehow can't make phone calls or that phone calls are really terrible. Now before texting and emailing and all of that, you had to make phone calls, um, you got over that anxiety pretty quickly. And so that's a little bit of what I wanna encourage you to do in terms of phone anxiety. Um, I'm gonna give you some very specific tools. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to make phone calls and how to manage anxiety, but some of it is just literally pushing through it. And if that means you're calling local businesses to find out their hours, if it means that you're calling um, you know, nursing homes and finding people that need somebody to talk to, whatever that means to practice, um, the more that you can do that, the better you're gonna feel about that. So I have nine steps for handling yourself and handling your anxiety around making a phone call. The first step is assessing your self-talk. You have some kind of self-talk around what making a phone call means. So that means that you know, you have to make a phone, let's say you have to make a phone call for a, a doctor's appointment. Um, and whatever, when it comes time, you have the phone in your hand, whatever's happening in your head is your self-talk. So if it's like, oh man, this is gonna suck, I don't wanna do this, I hate this. If you have this kind of running negative narrative, you're not gonna feel better. If your negative self-talk is saying, you can't do this, you're gonna say the wrong thing, they're gonna think you're stupid, they're gonna, whatever it is that your self-talk is saying, you gotta shift that. And that means saying, this is not that big of a deal, I can call and make this appointment. If I do a bad job and have to hang up, I can try again later, that's okay. So assess your self-talk and shift it into a positive, supportive self-talk like you would maybe for a friend or a loved one, give that to yourself. Second one is to prepare to get the items that you may need. You can think ahead. If you're calling to make an appointment or you're calling to talk to the unemployment office or you're calling whatever, you know the kinds of information you might need. And you can over-prepare. You may not need your social and your mom's maiden names and your birthday and your county of whatever. Like You may not need all that, but you could go ahead and make a list of all that so it's physically in front of you. Go ahead and write down your social security number. Write down the name of your insurance company. Whatever those details are that maybe on a regular moment you'd be able to be like, oh, I know that. In an anxiety moment that information may flee from your brain and so having it written down in front of you is going to help so prepare gather the materials you need write down any information even if it seems trivial having it in front of you is going to feel a lot better the third one is to smile put on a happy face when you call science is very clear that when you smile it sends positive messages to your brain. It does dopamine releases. It, it genuinely gives you a teeny little boost in mood and self-esteem and empowerment. And so if you can just even fake the smile, here we go, we're making this phone call. It is gonna come across in the phone call. You're gonna sound lighter. You're gonna feel lighter and more, um, more empowered. You're gonna feel more in control. So even if you don't feel like it, smile when you make the phone call. Greet people by name if you can. So if you make the phone call and somebody answers and they say, blah, 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 this is Karen, then you can say, hi, Karen say their name back to them. That gives you something to say, it gives you a detail to say, you don't have to come up with something. And it, with the smile, combined with the smile, is going to go ahead and make everybody feel just a little bit more at ease. So smile and say their name if you can. The fourth one is engaging. Find some way to engage. You introduce yourself. You can say, hello, my name is Karen McDowell. You can say um, your job title. I am a psychologist and I'm working on this thing. Whatever your, whatever your intro is, whatever your name is, and you can practice this saying you can practice saying these things ahead of time so get in front of the mirror in front of your phone and practice I mean in front of like a phone camera or whatever and practice saying hi my name is Karen how are you today and if somebody answered the phone and they're like hello this is Bob you can say oh hi Bob thank you so much for answering my call my name is Karen McDowell and I'm hoping you can help me whatever kind of intro that you can write if you need to write it out verbatim write it out verbatim that's totally fine okay so recapping the first four self-talk manage your self-talk prepare, gather the items that you need, 
put on a smile, and then engage with the person that answers the phone. Okay, the fifth one is for you to just state your goal. State what you need. I'm calling to make an appointment. I'm returning someone's phone call. I need help and I don't know what to do. It's okay for you to not know. Um, people, people respond well to pleasantries and so when you are nice and you say what you need and you say what you're looking for, people gen generally are gonna be more responsive than if you kind of expect them to read your mind or you are like kind of stumbling. So prepare and practice what's your goal statement. Why are you making the phone call in one sentence? Practice that statement before you call, and then when you call and you engage and you say, hello, Bob, my name is Karen, and I need to make an appointment to meet with Dr. Whoever next week. Okay, being pleasant, state your goal. The next one, number six, is identify areas that you're not sure about. You do not have to have all the answers when you make these phone calls. It's okay for you to say, I need to make an appointment, and I'm not sure what information I need for this phone call. Maybe you didn't know what you needed to prepare for the phone call. I'm not sure if I'm calling the right department. I don't know if there are any appointments available at this time. You are absolutely fine for saying you don't know, and in fact, that often makes the person on the other end of the phone more willing to help you and better able to help you because you've said what you need and you've said what you don't know, and then you can get the answers you need. Take your time. That's the seventh one. Take your time. You can take your time on these phone calls. Um, you can call back if you need to. You don't have to answer every question all at once. You don't have to, you don't get, it's not a one shot deal where you get one chance to make this phone call and that's it. I mean, maybe occasionally there's some of that, but generally when we're talking about kind of general phone use and anxiety, you know, if you get halfway through this phone conversation and you're like, I'm so sorry, I have to hang up now. I'm gonna call back later. You get to do that, that's fine. Um, so take your time and, and be easy with yourself. Be flexible. Um, don't stress about forcing this into a certain time period or, or, or to be done in a certain way. Number eight is the conclusion. Make a conclusion statement. Um, that could be something like, I'm gonna call back if I need help. Um, you could say like, I understand what I need now. Um, I, you know, I can, I got the appointment that I needed, that's what I needed, or I didn't get the appointment that I needed, I didn't get the information that I needed, whatever your statement is, your ending conclusion. And then disengaging, how you get off the phone. Um, gratitude statements are so, so good. Saying things like, thank you so much for your help, I appreciate your time today. Um, and you can say these things even if there, you know, you can find things to say that maybe aren't, you know, so like uh, if you're frustrated, maybe you had a phone call and it didn't go the way you wanted. So you don't wanna be like, oh, thank you so much. You were so great. When they maybe didn't, it wasn't that great of a phone call. You can say, thank you for your time. You can say, thank you for your, for listening. Um, you know, you can, you can express gratitude for a piece of it without being like, oh, you're the best. If they weren't the best, that's totally fine. So gratitude statements can be really helpful. Disengagement statement. So this is kind of, I hear from a lot of people with anxiety that that, that, that ending, they're like, oh, do I say bye? What do I say at the very end? A disengagement statement can be something like, it was nice talking to you. I look forward to chatting in the future. I'm gonna follow up later. Um, just something that says, okay, I'm ending it now. A little disengagement statement. Um, and then you finish it. You finish it with a word. Good night, goodbye, thanks, talk to you later. Whatever that kind of like last little chook. So you have a gratitude statement, a disengagement statement, and then a finish. Um, and that's gonna be your conclusion or your ending. So I'm gonna hit the whole, I'm gonna hit the whole nine tips again. First, manage your self-talk. Second, gather your stuff, prepare for the phone call. Third, smile, go in it positive. Four, engage, talk to the person, say, say their name, say your name, say hello, say how are you, something engagement. Number five is state your goal, say what you need. Number six, say what you don't know. Ask for whatever you might, any, anything you don't know or information you don't, you don't have. Number seven is take your time, recognize that you can hang up and call back later, that, that, that you can, um, take time to think about things. You're, you're allowed to take the time that you need. Number eight is the conclusion, wrapping it up, a conclusion statement, got what I needed, didn't get what I needed, I'm gonna ask somebody else, whatever that wrap up of your goal and your what you know and don't know. And then the ending, which again is gonna consist of a gratitude statement, a disengagement statement, and a goodbye, a final ending. So if you can do all of those strategies and um, you know you can prepare as much or as little as you want, have things in front of you, uh, writing these things out, writing these conclusion statements, writing these gratitude statements, write them out. Your brain might freeze in the moment because that's what anxiety does. Your nervous system freezes when it gets frightened. 
Um, so the more support that you can make for yourself, the better. And know this, the more you do this, the easier it gets. And so what might take you half an hour, an hour, whatever to prep for a simple phone call, you'll find over time that you don't have to do that anymore, that this is gonna kind of become a habit and become kind of natural. There's no need to be afraid of phone calls, but it makes perfect sense. Your nervous system wants to protect you and phone calls can be anxiety provoking. And so your nervous system's trying to protect you and tell you to stay away from it. But you, the logical person has to say, nope, gonna tackle this, gonna get through this, gonna get better, gonna kick anxiety's ass. Catch me on, uh, well, YouTube obviously, and Facebook and Instagram and drkarenmcdowell.com and join me next Wednesday for a uh, live Anxiety is an Asshole workshop, which I'm very excited about. I'll see you there, hopefully.